There's nothing like a Super Bowl title. With the Lombardi Trophy in your hands, you're on top of the world. But defending that crown is where the real challenge begins. There's just been one repeat Super Bowl winner this century. So what about everyone else? Let's take a look at what happened to every Super Bowl winner since 2000. Our story begins in Baltimore. The Ravens were fresh off an all-time dominant season, but change was coming. In 2001, they lost running back Priest Holmes and Trent Dilfer, who became the first starting quarterback ever to not return after a Super Bowl victory. To make matters worse, young stud Jamal Lewis was lost for the year in the preseason, leaving 33-year-old Terry Allen as the lead rusher. The offense finished 18th in scoring, but the Ravens endured, anchored as always by that defense. Defense. Back in the pocket, Bullware got him, and down he goes. The ball's loose. Ravens pick it up. Peter Bullware led the AFC with 15 sacks, including four in their playoff clinching win over the Vikings. The defense retained 10 of its 11 starters from Super Bowl 35, like Pro Bowlers Ray Lewis and Rod Woodson. They finished the season 10 and 6. Their ferocious pass rush led them past Miami in the wild card round, but they'd get trounced by the Steelers the following week. Baltimore gained just 22 yards on the ground and gave the ball away four times in the loss. After their dramatic rise to Super Bowl glory, the Patriots set their sights in defending the team's first title. A 25-year-old Tom Brady did his part, throwing for over 3,700 yards and 28 touchdowns. The champs won their first three games, but that matchup against KC would be the highlight of the season. New England boasted four Pro Bowlers, including Richard Seymour and Ty Law, but the team was still learning how to win. The Pats struggled with the run on both sides of the ball, finishing 28th in rush offense and 31st in rushing defense. They allowed 100-plus rushing yards in 10 games, including two straight losses that bounced them from playoff contention. It would be the first of just two seasons between 2001 and 2019 without the Pats in the postseason. In Tampa, another all-time defense fought to protect its crown in 2003. After a week one shutout, it looked like the Bucks would pick up right where they left off. But the wheels started to wobble, and in week five on Monday Night Football, they completely fell off. But this is amazing. Against the Tampa Bay defense, and now a 29-yard attempt by Vanderjohn. He hits the upright, and it bangs through. How crazy is this? Despite that collapse, the Tampa defense still finished in the top five in points allowed. Simeon Rice produced another 15-sack season, but the offense just couldn't carry its weight. Brad Johnson threw 21 interceptions, and Mike Allstott missed most of the season due to an injury. The Bucks' Achilles' heel in 2003 was close games. Seven of their nine losses came by a touchdown or less. They finished 7-9 and nine and out of the playoffs. Back in Foxborough, where we finally saw a repeat champ. After riding the league's top defense to a Super Bowl win, the 2004 Patriots returned with a vengeance and compiled one of the most complete rosters in NFL history. Three major additions, Keith Trailer, rookie Vince Wilfork, and Pro Bowler Corey Dillon. And up the middle they go for the touchdown. New England improved across the board, fielding the fourth best scoring offense and jumping from the 27th to the seventh best rushing attack. The Pats won a record 21 straight games over two seasons before falling to Pittsburgh in week eight. But after dominating Peyton Manning and the Colts in the divisional round, they would get their revenge. Roethlisberger picked off. You could see that one coming. Rodney Harrison will run it back. The defense applied the clamps in Super Bowl 39, and they became just the eighth team to win back-to-back -back Lombardis. Belichick and company set their sights on a three-peat in 2005, but the injury bug had different ideas. The team deteriorated across the board, and it was the defense that took the biggest hit. Playoff hero Ty Law jumped ship, and Rodney Harrison missed most of the season as the team finished with the second worst pass defense in the league. Going long and wide open is Dante Hall, and Hall has a touchdown. Even with a third straight All-Pro season from Seymour, New England only forced 18 turnovers, just half the number from 04. 
Brady was still Brady, he posted a league-best 4,110 yards alongside 26 touchdowns. The Patriots finished 10-6 and, and showed life with a decisive wildcard win. But in the next round, they committed five turnovers and fell to Jake Plummer and the Broncos. All the Denver points, Gino, have come off Patriots turnovers. In Pittsburgh, the franchise's fifth Lombardi trophy was followed up by a bit of a flop. The Steelers lost Hall of Famer Jerome Bettis to retirement, then Chris Hope and Super Bowl hero Antoine Randall L to free agency. The team added Santonio Holmes and Ryan Clark to fill the void, but it wasn't enough. The black and yellow struggled mightily in the first half, going two and six and committing 24 turnovers. But it wasn't all bad. Willie Parker rushed for nearly 1,500 yards, while Casey Hampton anchored the third best rushing defense. And they also had Troy Polamalu. Fewer quick pass over the middle, intercepted Polamalu. Polamalu to the outside, 40. And pulled out of bounds inside the 40 yard line. But the Steelers couldn't hold on to the ball, especially when it mattered the most. They committed the fourth most turnovers in the league and were knocked out of playoff contention by the rival Ravens in week 16. After finally reaching the promised land in 2006, Peyton Manning and the Colts responded with another dominant season. They galloped out of the gates, starting 7-0 before losing a thriller to the perfect Patriots. Sure, the Sheriff threw for over 4,000 yards and 31 scores, but this season was all about defense. Indy lost four starters, but welcomed back a healthy Bob Sanders. It made all the difference. Running out of time and tackled at the 15 by Bob Sanders. The defense allowed the fewest points in the league as Sanders won Defensive Player of the Year. Marvin Harrison played just five games, but the offense was bolstered by rookie Anthony Gonzalez, a 1,500-yard season from Reggie Wayne, and 11 scores from Dallas Clark. The Colts would win six straight down the stretch, finishing 13-3 and, and clinching their fifth straight division crown, but it was all for naught. Manning throws over the middle tip, and it's intercepted. Intercepted at the two-yard line. Three Indy turnovers and a late-game TD by backup Billy Volick helped the Chargers pull off a stunner in Indy. It's not easy following up one of the biggest upsets in sports history, but the Giants did their best even without Michael Strahan and Jeremy Shockey. After slaying the mighty Patriots in Super Bowl 42, the G-Men continued to dominate starting the next season 11-1. and one. He said no. Meanwhile, Jacob says no. Derek Ward just walks into the end zone. 11 and 1. Behind a stellar line, the offense thrived. Brandon Jacobs and Derek Ward became just the fifth rushing duo to each produce 1,000 yards in the same season. Meanwhile, Eli Manning delivered a career year as the offense amassed the third most points and committed a league low 13 turnovers. Meanwhile, Justin Tuck stepped up with an all-pro season, leading the league's fifth best scoring defense. The Giants finished 12-4, but were dealt a major blow in week 12 as the Plaxico Burris shooting saga largely derailed the season. And the Philadelphia Eagles have come to Giants Stadium and beaten the defending Super Bowl champions. Big Ben and the Steelers gave us an all-time finish in Super Bowl 43, and then they pulled out a few more tricks in 2009. He looks. He throws it for the near sideline. He's it's got caught it. in the end zone. Pittsburgh touchdown. Oh, wow. Incredible. I don't believe it. But that epic finish was the exception that proves the rule. Overall, the clutch factor sputtered down the stretch in Pittsburgh. They started out hot, winning six of their first eight matchups behind a solid run game and a reliable fleet of pass catchers. The second half was another story. As injuries to key pieces like Willie Parker and Troy Polamalu mounted, the Steelers lost a slew of close games. All seven of their losses came by a touchdown or less, including two straight overtime bouts on the road. What a ball game. They finished with a top 10 pass offense and top five rushing defense, but their nine and seven record wasn't enough for a trip to the playoffs. In 2009, the Saints delivered a long-awaited championship to the Big Easy. With Drew Brees and his full complement of offensive weapons back the next year, New Orleans was poised for another title run. But that's not exactly how it played out. Their running back tandem of Pierre Thomas and Reggie Bush both suffered injuries, and the team dropped from sixth 
to 28th in rushing yards. Meanwhile, Breeze threw a career-worst 22 interceptions but still finished with 4,600 yards and 33 scores. At the end of the day, it was the defense that kept them afloat. There's Clausen, and it's going to be intercepted by Greer. Greer bringing it back 15, down to the 10. He'll trot into the end zone for the score. The Saints hit their groove in the middle of the season, winning six in a row behind number nine and the fourth best passing D in the league. New Orleans finished 11 and five and were seemingly given a dream matchup against the seven and nine Seahawks, but Marshawn Lynch had other plans. Out silent now, as opposed to when the Saints have the ball. Oh, look at this run. What a run. Marshawn Lynch still oh. on his feet. Has blockers now. He's dancing his way for the touchdown. Uh, are you kidding me? The 2011 Packers were scary, boasting the Lombardi Trophy and one of the best offenses in history. There was nothing stopping Green Bay from marching to a repeat title. Guarantee they won't be ready for this. Aaron Rodgers was league MVP, throwing for over 4,600 yards and 45 touchdowns not to mention the best single season passer rating of all time. Behind a gaudy receiving core, the Packers waltzed to a 15 and one record, winning eight games by double digits. Sets up plenty of time, rain goes deep down the middle, no there it is. 32 yard line, over the middle, that is caught. Here's Cobb, the rookie inside the 10, touchdown Packers. Second down and two throw, uh -oh. wide open Jennings, caught, touchdown Packers. But the defense was a major weakness. Pro Bowler Nick Collins missed most of the season as Green Bay fielded the league's worst passing D. The pass rush didn't show up, producing 18 fewer sacks than the year before. In the divisional round, these problems were on full display. The pack laid an egg against the eventual champion Giants, allowing 37 points and committing four turnovers in a shocking playoff loss. Not the Packer team we have seen all season. Nope. And how about those Giants coming off another shocking Super Bowl win against the Pats? The squad entered the 2012 season with a ton of confidence. They lost Super Bowl hero Mario Manningham, but still posted the sixth best scoring offense. Ahmad Bradshaw hit the thousand yard mark, while Eli Manning, Victor Cruz, and lineman Chris Snee all posted Pro Bowl seasons. And, and two. Meanwhile, the defense was a disaster. A revolving door in the secondary proved critical as the G-Man gave up the fifth most passing yards in the NFL. Outside of Pro Bowler Jason Pierre-Paul, their pass rush also lapsed. With their playoff hopes on the line, New York was outscored 67 to 14 in two brutal losses to the Falcons and Ravens. They'd finish nine and seven and miss the postseason. A well-rounded Ravens squad took home the Lombardi Trophy in 2012, but their follow-up campaign didn't quite pass muster. The biggest culprit? A mass exodus of Super Bowl talent. Baltimore lost Hall of Famers Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, not to mention Anquan Bolden, Bernard Pollard, and center Matt Burke. Week one set the tone. The team was blown out by the Broncos, allowing a record-tying seven touchdown passes from Peyton Manning. Not 13, it was 86, a kickoff, and Manning was throwing wide open. Again, Manning off the play fake throws, and over the middle it is Thomas. And Manning throwing, and it is a fingertip catch. Side and he's caught and spinning away for the touchdown. Rolling right. Wide open. Wes Welker. And Manning airing it out and a fingertip catch. Demarius Thomas. Pick up the blitz. Flag is thrown. There's your first down and a lot more for Demarius Thomas. And for Manning, seven touchdown passes. The offense struggled as well, finishing 30th in total rushing yards. But the run defense was still top five, giving up just seven touchdowns on the ground behind Pro Bowlers Haloti Nada and Terrell Suggs. It was a rebuild year in Baltimore, but Jim Harbaugh coached up his squad as best he could. He kept them competitive as they finished eight and eight, losing four games by three points or fewer. In 2014, the Seahawks were in an absolute groove. After winning their first ever Super Bowl, Seattle stuck to the winning script. They got off to a rocky 3-3 start, but they righted the ship. 
Pete Carroll's team won 9 of 10 down the stretch, giving up just 6.5 points per game over the final six weeks. Hill delivers again to Kendricks, and he lost it. Ball picked up. Bruce Irvin, touchdown Seahawks. Seattle finished with the league's best scoring defense for the third straight season and also topped the league in yards allowed pass defense. They try me, I'm picking you first time. And rush offense. Marshawn Lynch wreaked havoc on the ground and Russell Wilson did his part. The Seahawks posted a 12 and four record and were poised for another deep playoff run. They pulled out a miracle win in the conference championship before one of history's most baffling play calls slammed their title hopes shut. Now you have to stop Marshawn Lynch. Play clock at five. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Oh no! Riding high from a title plucked out of thin air, the Patriots were back at it in 2015. They lost some pieces in the secondary, but Malcolm Butler stepped up, delivering a Pro Bowl season alongside Chandler Jones and Jamie Collins. Meanwhile, it was the dominant duo of Brady and Gronk that powered this Pats team. Gonna be seven and two. Here's Brady over the top. Open is Gronkowski. He gets away and he has it inside the 20. They're not gonna catch him. Brady threw for nearly 4,800 yards and 36 touchdowns, while Gronk amassed 1,200 yards and 11 scores. New England posted the third best offense and committed a league low 14 turnovers. But the run game was practically non-existent and their one-dimensional offense proved costly. They dropped several big games down the stretch, including a brutal season-ending loss to the eventual champion Broncos in the AFC Championship. The Pats averaged just 61 yards on the ground in their final five games, including the playoffs. Speaking of those Broncos, they tried to keep the momentum going during 2016. Hall of Famer Peyton Manning retired while Malik Jackson and Danny Trevathan were lost to free agency, but they still had the no-fly zone who surrendered the fewest passing yards in the NFL, and they still had Super Bowl MVP Vaughn Miller. Gotta go 75 yards. Here comes Miller! The ball comes out, it's scooped up by Ray, and the Broncos put it away. Denver started off 4-0, but the offense plummeted to 27th in total yards behind new QB Trevor Simeon. Meanwhile, their weakened front seven seeded the fifth most rushing yards in the league. The Broncos allowed at least 120 rushing yards in 10 separate games compared to just two the year before. They rallied to an 8-4 record before three straight losses. A 33-10 drubbing at the hands of the Chiefs knocked them out of playoff contention. Yeah, it's the Patriots again. This time they had just completed an all-time championship comeback in Super Bowl 51. Now they were looking for their second repeat title. It took a few weeks, including a letdown loss on opening night, but the Pats found their groove again. They lost Julian Edelman to a preseason injury and some other key pieces to free agency, but they also got Gronk back from injury and traded for star wide receiver Brandon Cooks. That was enough for Tom Brady, who put on an MVP performance in 2017. Brady, pump, Brady, rifles to the corner. Oh, it's caught! Touchdown! This was another well-rounded squad, finishing among the top five in both scoring offense and defense. Belichick again relied on a bend but don't break mentality as the Pats won 11 of their final 12 games to finish 13-3. After a controversial Week 15 in Pittsburgh and a nail-biter versus the Jags in the AFC title game, the defense finally broke against the Eagles. In Super Bowl 52, Belichick's defense allowed 538 yards and 41 points as Philly took home the Lombardi Trophy. Nick Foles earned cheesesteaks for life after his Super Bowl performance, but Carson Wentz returned to duty in 2018. The squad bolstered their defense by adding Michael Bennett and Haloti Nada, but both sides of the ball were plagued by inconsistency. As a result, Philly played in a ton of nail biters. 12 of their 16 games were decided by a touchdown or less. I got double coverage again. Ryan for Jones and no. 
the return of Jason Peters, and a career year from Zach Ertz propelled a seventh-ranked pass offense, but they felt the loss of LeGarrette Blunt, finishing 28th in rush offense. All-pro Fletcher Cox led a stout front seven, but the secondary allowed the third most passing yards in the league. Still, the Eagles rattled off three straight wins to clinch a playoff spot. After a wild win in the opening round, Foles was behind the wheel again and on his way to yet another comeback before the magic finally ran out. Get this off for the two-minute warning. A little surprise. Foles back throws. Intercepted! It went right through Jeffrey's hands! It's Lattimore! For the sixth and final time on this list, the Pats are back. Their latest Super Bowl win was a little less iconic than the rest, but a ring is a ring. In 2019, without Gronk and a couple key linemen, the offense took a hit but it was more than made up for by the league's best defense. He's actually playing right guard at camp. He's now the starter at left tackle. Fitzpatrick sprint out, intercepted, and goodbye, Stephon Gilmore. New England jumped out to an 8-0 start, but this season was a tale of two halves. The offense lacked major punch outside of Edelman and averaged just 21 points per game down the stretch. The Gronk-sized hole reared its ugly head, and the Pats lost big games against the Ravens, Texans, and Chiefs in the final stretch of the season. The Brady era ended in a whimper as Tennessee pulled off an upset victory in Foxborough. A fourth quarter comeback gave the Chiefs their first Lombardi in 50 years. In 2020, their title defense got off to a blistering start. Behind a record-setting campaign from Travis Kelsey and an all-pro effort by Tyreek Hill, KC won its first seven games by an average of nearly 16 points. It's gonna get very terse in that building. Mahomes down the field, yes! And he's up and in, bouncing off the ground for the touchdown. The Chiefs finished a league best 14-2 but had to squeak out several late season wins. Rookie running back Clyde Edwards-Alaire added more depth to the offense, but losses on the O-line continued to pile up. Come playoff time, they needed a gutsy fourth down conversion to sneak past Cleveland. In Super Bowl 55, they couldn't stop the Tampa pass rush though, scoring just nine total points in a disappointing loss. In 2021, the Bucks became the first championship team in the salary cap era to bring back all 22 starters. And with that same winning formula, Tampa Bay didn't miss a beat. The offense amassed the second most points in the NFL. A 44-year-old Brady passed for a league-high 5,300 yards and 43 touchdowns behind a Pro Bowl offensive line. And here he is on third and three from the pocket. Connecting. That's Perriman taking it all the way for the win. The defense finished top five in points allowed as the Bucks charged into the postseason, winning seven of their final eight games. But as Brady defied logic, the rest of the team's roster couldn't escape injuries. Richard Sherman and Pro Bowler Chris Godwin were lost for the year while key pieces like Leonard Fournette, Tristan Wirfs, and Levante David all missed time. In the divisional round, the ageless wonder engineered a masterful 24-point second-half comeback, but the eventual champion Rams would prevail on a last-second field goal. With four seconds remaining, hits it with the right foot. It is through. It is good. What did we just witness?